um, for those who have to leave early or might not be able to um, join us on time, uh, the entirety of this presentation will be available online. Uh, we'll be posting that to our website later this week, and new student programs will also have that where you find your orientation information as well. Um, that being said, I'd like to take a moment just to introduce myself. Um, my name is Miranda McCall, and I'm the Acting Director of Financial Aid at Duke. And um, I know that there are a lot of questions related to financial aid right now. Um, and so we'll go through the planned topic for today, which is, uh, includes all of the resources that we have on campus for you. Uh, but I want to allot plenty of time to take your questions. So once we go through that, um, we will enable the chat. The chat feature is not enabled uh, for the group chat right now, but we'll open that out and do a live Q&A for the last half of our session today. Um, and so with that being said, I'll go ahead and get started talking about um, resources and what we have to offer here at Duke. So uh, yesterday we spent some time talking about the aid award and uh, financial aid comes in a variety of formats. Um, and of course we consider financial aid resources. Those resources uh, include work study, student loans, uh, we're going to talk today about how do you buy books? Uh, what if you need a computer? How do you use something called a flex card uh, or a flex account uh, in, in most students' cases because you can actually use your phone uh, and, and ways that you can use that uh, to, to help with things like buying books in a computer. And then we're going to cover a really important topic I've received a lot of questions about, and that is health insurance. So let's talk first about work study. We get a lot of questions about this, and I also just want to acknowledge one of the top questions that we get um, is, are we going to be able to work this fall? Given the number of students uh, in upper class, uh, the juniors and seniors who will not be on campus this fall, there was concern that there might not be campus jobs. Um, right now, the work study program is still planned to proceed. However, um, the types of jobs are likely to be different than what we would have seen in the past. Uh, in many years, we would have seen things, um, and, and we'll talk about the types of jobs that are available. Those might look a little different this year, and we'll talk about that as we get there. Um, and we'll also spend some time in the Q&A addressing questions as well. Uh, but we want this information to be useful, not just for this fall, but for the duration of your time at Duke. And so most of you, if you've already received your aid award, saw on there a line for work study. And work study is a job. It's an on-campus job. Um, and in some cases, we partner with community nonprofits as well. And it's paid to you as a paycheck. So this isn't something, if you were to find a work study job, um, it's paid to you as you earn it. This isn't something that goes against the tuition charges or the housing or meal charges that show up on your bill. It's deposited into your bank account. And so something that's very important for you to do is make sure that you have a bank account. Um, we'll talk later about some of the resources that we have on campus in addition to what we just do in the financial aid office. One of those resources is something called personal finance at duke.edu. And this is a pretty big part of what they like to spend their time talking about as well, is ensuring that students understand um, what they need in order to be successful. And a bank account is the start of all of that. Um, and work studies deposited into your bank account. If you receive financial aid and we need to get funds to you directly, you'll also need to make sure that you have a bank account with direct deposit set up in it so that we can get it there. Work study is not mandatory. So that's a question I get a lot. Do I have to work? And the answer is no. And I'll give you a little background on when we think about financial aid, why do we even offer work study? Um, you may have seen when you were looking at, well, what does Duke cost? And there's something called the cost of attendance. And that number is higher than our cost for just tuition, housing, and meals that you'll see on a, a bill from Duke. In the cost was also included a pretty significant amount of money for things like books, but even more significantly, there was a lot of money in there allocated to what's called miscellaneous, about $2,000 worth. 
financial aid generally was not designed to put grant assistance toward those spending money types of costs. Instead, we know that you want to be able to spend money. We know that you'll want to be able to do things outside of just the directly curricular activities while you're on campus. Um, and so we include that and we want you to plan for it. But work study is a great way to facilitate those types of just spending money expenses. And so to that end, you absolutely do not need to take a work study job if that's not what you'd like to do. Um, work study jobs pay a variety of rates. And so if there are jobs within the community that you would like to take or would like to continue, you're welcome to do that. We just put it out there as an offer to you. The reason that work study is so advantageous is because financial aid pays part of your wage. So if you can find that job on campus that you really want, um, you end up being a candidate that the department might be more likely to hire because you're coming with your own money to take that job. They don't have to pay 100% of your wage because you're coming through work study. If you haven't applied for financial aid yet, you can still do so and we can still offer work study in your financial aid award. So we've talked a little bit about why work study is aid. The kinds of jobs that are available, these, these can tend to vary this particular year. And so you'll see in many cases, you can work in a professor's lab, you can work in our libraries, we have neighborhood schools where you can be a tutor. Obviously with the move to many things being virtual, the nature of those jobs might have changed. The important thing to know about it is, well, how do I know what's available and what's changed? And for that piece, uh, we actually have information on our website. We have a, a page devoted to work study, and there you'll be able to see um, job postings, Duke lists, you can click on it. There's a little screenshot of it there. Um, and you'll actually see advertisements for jobs that you can apply to on campus. So I'm gonna talk about the next resource that we have, and you would have seen this included in a financial aid offer for many of you and that's loans. But we want you to know a lot more about loans before you borrow. They're a great resource, but they're educational tools that we'd like you to use as you think about what's the right amount for you to borrow. Um, there are several kinds of loans, and some of you will have noticed that maybe up till last week, you were able to see a financial aid offer from us when you went to your Duke Hub area or maybe your student portal uh, that you were using at the time of admissions. And you may have noticed that you can't access your information through Duke Hub anymore. That's because we're updating your financial aid offers. Many of you saw something called a Duke Educational Assistance Loan in that initial offer. And um, the Department of Education announced drastically reduced federal loan rates since we made those initial offers. And so we wanna make sure that you have the best loans. Before we were offering you an institutional loan because that was the best loan available. That's changed and we wanna make sure that you have the best offer. And so now you're going to see when we reopen that portal and you see your adjusted financial aid, you'll see potentially two types of loans. Um, some of you will see subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans. Some of you will just see an unsubsidized loan out there. And the main difference is what they accrue in terms of interest. So um, if you're familiar with the concept of interest, subsidized loan, there's no interest accruing on it while you're in school. An unsubsidized loan, some interest accrues. However, the interest rates are only 2.75%, which is so low um, that we would still encourage you to accept the loans if you need them because they really are the best rates available. So we've talked a little bit about interest rates. Um, we'll talk about repayment terms. This is something else you'll wanna think about when you get a loan. If you accept a loan, um, you'll be then prompted in your Duke Hub to-do list to go and do a couple of extra steps. One of those things is called entrance loan counseling, and that's gonna give you all of the information about the repayment terms on your loan. I've mentioned some students already have loans in their aid award. This is a table that shows you, depending on your level of income, how much you might've seen in that initial offer. You don't have to memorize this slide. It's still available on your website, um, on our website. And so feel free to go uh, and take a look at it. But you, when we give you access to those aid awards again, you'll go back and you'll be able to see how much you've been offered. This doesn't mean that if you have a loan or you haven't been offered a loan yet, that that's the extent of your options in terms of borrowing. 
And one of the things that we want to stress is if you're considering borrowing additional funding, uh, one of the things that you'll want to check first is with your financial aid counselor to find out if those really good loans that I'm mentioning with the low interest rates, if there's any additional through those programs that are available to you. You don't have to start at your bank. Um, you, can, you can start by finding out and trying to maximize that federal loan eligibility. That said, for first year students, the most you can borrow through the federal program uh, for a dependent student is $5,500. And so depending where you were on that scale on the last slide, you might not have a lot of remaining eligibility. If you need more, there are a couple of places that you can look. The first is um, if a parent is willing to borrow, the federal government has a program for that and they can apply for that online. But we actually have um, an entire website devoted to sharing information about the types of loans that you could borrow. That includes from, from banks and private lenders. And we even have a tool on there that allows you to compare to try to find the one that might give you the best rates. As I mentioned, we want you to be as well informed about these as you can. Um, these loans will come with something, and this is a big um, loan amortization calculator, but we'll that is going to let you know how much does this loan actually cost you? Not just the amount that you're borrowing, but when you have to repay it after you leave Duke, what's the real cost to you so that you can make the best decision? Um, again, I'm going to put the plug in for our recommended lenders webpage because as you consider your personal finances, we want to make sure you have all of these things in mind. You can also reach out to personalfinance at duke.edu with any questions you have related to those loans. Another big question, lots of students want to know, how do we buy books? Um, we don't bill the cost of books to you. So when you get your bill from Duke, it is tuition, housing, meals, if you're living on campus. Um, everything else is something that usually your family contribution goes to pay. Um, but for those of you who may be receiving higher levels of financial assistance, or maybe you don't have a family contribution or a parent contribution, um, if your aid is greater than your cost, you might receive uh, what we call a refund to help you make those purchases. But most students will be using their family contribution. And so the question goes, well, if I have to use my family contribution to go buy my books, where should I do that? Um, and the answer is there are lots of places you can. So once you have your registration, you know what courses you're taking, um, you can shop around and we would encourage you to do so. Um, the the variety of places that now sell it, you can buy used textbooks, you can rent textbooks. Um, if you purchase a textbook, most stores allow you to sell back to them. The campus bookstore is one of those places. You can sell a book back to them and they'll give you cash for your used book or you can sell it at an online retailer. Um, but you don't have to buy them. As I mentioned, renting is an option, but you can also use the library um, to check out textbooks if they're available. The second big question that we get is if I don't already have a laptop or access to a laptop and I need to buy one, what are my options? We don't offer grant assistance for computer purchases. Um, we do have computer labs on campus. Um, my understanding is those labs will still be open and available to students residing on campus. Uh, but we can help you coordinate finances to make sure that you have a laptop if that's what you prefer. Um, as I mentioned, you may have some additional loan eligibility through federal programs, or we can talk with you about other lending programs that might apply. The other component will be um, Duke Stores actually offers a payment plan, so you can finance a computer through Duke Stores. It does have interest associated with it, so before you make that commitment, um, I believe that interest rate is higher than the federal loan, and so we want to make sure that you are using the best and cheapest source of financing available, so make sure you contact us first. Another option whether that's purchasing books or purchasing a, a computer through Duke stores, you have access to this account that's called a flex account, a flexible a spending account. It's tied to your Duke ID. You can swipe your Duke card um, at any campus vendor, though uh, we just gained the ability, I think it's only been a couple years that we've had it, where you actually just have the equivalent of that card on your phone and that works at campus vendors as well. Um, it's easy especially when it's on your phone, to purchase things on it. You just walk up and you can actually swipe it at campus vendors um, on campus, just hold it close, uh, and it will charge your Flex card. But when you do that, um, you need to understand that every time you use Flex, it's going against your bill at Duke. So they're just going to charge you for it, and, and there's a bill at the end of the month that's going to say that it comes due. But it's not financed. And if you put money on the card, 
you could be in a situation if you still owe a balance and you haven't paid that off, your registration for future semesters could be blocked or you might not be able to use your card to purchase laundry because a hold will be put on your account for unpaid bills. And so what we would encourage you to do is use the app to load it with money ahead of time, just like a prepaid debit card. And then that way you're just spending down on money you already know is in there and you don't lose track of how much you've purchased and you don't end up with late fees or registration holds. You can monitor how much you have left in your account right online and through that app. And so um, it's, it's actually really easy to use. So there's no reason we used to have to go into the library to a kiosk and type in how much we wanted to put on uh, flex cards to use in this way. Now you can do it um, right from your residence hall um, or from home. Another question uh, that gets uh, asked a lot this time of year is what am I going to do about health insurance? Um, does financial aid pay for health insurance? Everyone at Duke, um, we are required by law for every student who's on our campus to be covered by some form of health insurance. And so by default, uh, we will put a health insurance charge on your account as a first year student um, saying that we plan to enroll you in our health insurance plan. That doesn't mean that you have to pay that charge. What it means is you need to take action because one of two things is going to happen. You can either waive the insurance saying, I already have my own, I don't need to buy yours, Duke, um, and you'll have the opportunity to enter information about yourself uh, and, your, and your coverage online. Or you'll say, I don't have any health insurance and I really need it. But we're going to do that through a process called a waiver request. And again, I keep bringing up Duke Hub. It's a really important tool. Um, and you'll need to interact with it quite a lot as you start classes. But you have to go in and say, I want to waive my health insurance costs. And you're either waiving it for the fact that you don't need the charge or you're waiving it because you're on financial aid because you don't have any health insurance right now at all. Um, either way, we need you to take that action. Once it's been submitted, Student Health reviews either your current insurance. So if you have health insurance, um, they'll say, well, just don't charge. You can keep the insurance you have. And that's called an approval. And they just remove the charge from your bill. But if they say, actually, that insurance that you already have doesn't work in North Carolina and you're living in North Carolina, um, if that's the case, then you're going to be required to enroll in the Duke Student Health Plan. Uh, or if you indicate, I don't have any health insurance, you'll be required to enroll in the Duke Student Health Plan. Um, when that happens, we get a notification. And if you're receiving need-based grant aid from Duke, we'll cover the health insurance charge for you. You have to go and complete this online process by September 15th. I would encourage you to do it sooner rather than later. One of the biggest things that happen when we find students who are in a bad situation for spring registration and they say, there's a hold on my account and I don't know what to do and I owe $3,600 and I don't know why and I don't know how to pay it, it's because they missed this deadline. Um, you have to be able to enroll or waive coverage prior to September 15th. So we need you to take that action, go through that process before September 15th because once the deadline passes, that charge can't be removed. It stays on your account. And then you're in a situation where we may not be able to pay for it anymore. We need you to take that action prior to September 15th. So if you get the opportunity to do it um, in the coming weeks, as soon as that uh, becomes an available action to take, we want you to do that. You can find out information about health insurance if you're wondering, what does it cover? What can I do? How do I use it? Um, this is the contact information. Um, you can find this on the Student Affairs website at Duke. Um, you're welcome to jot it down now. We'll make these PowerPoints again available in the same places as these cloud recordings for you. Um, if you don't, don't write it down now, that's okay. We have instructions, by the way, with screen prints about how to um, go through the waiver process. If you're not sure which drop downs to click as you go through, uh, we want to make sure you get the information right. And so we actually have screenshots on our website to show you how. So those are our resources. That was just a quick overview of what's available. I'm gonna stop my screen share. And um, I've tried to allow um, as much time as we, we can 
to try to answer your questions that might not have been covered. I know we had some people who joined us a little later and might have missed earlier parts of the presentation. Um, it is okay if you ask me a question that I already covered in the presentation. Um, our goal for this is to make sure everybody has the best information possible. So um, there, there isn't, isn't a bad question. So feel free to, um, to post in the chat. Um, Michael, if you can open up the chat for folks, we'll begin accepting questions. It is now open. Great. Okay, first question here. Uh, are there any benefits to using the Flex account versus just using your own debit credit card? The benefit um, is probably convenient. Uh, we would, that, that's one, certainly because it's tied to your Duke card and it's on your phone. Of course, your debit or credit card may be as well. The difference is um, if with a credit card, if you don't pay the fee, um, you're going to accrue interest on that. And chances are it's going to be significant interest depending on the rate on your credit card. Um, a debit card might not be a bad option to use because that's taking the money directly out of your bank. You, you don't have to pre-fill something. Um, you can just use your debit card. The benefit of Flex is not all students have access um, to debit or credit cards or they may be sharing that with their parents. Um, and if that's the case, then using Flex is a very attractive option because you or a parent can preload the account and then you've still got your funding without actually having to spend money out of potentially a shared bank account with your family. And Michael, would it be possible for us to see your smiling face uh, while we go through these? I know um, we have a number of our counselors here and I wanna make sure people are able to see and identify who they are. If you're a counselor, could you, um, if, you're, if your camera's on, could you just give a wave really quick? These are the folks who are um, here to help and answer your questions um, throughout the semester. And we wanna make sure that um, you know who they are because um, our goal is to support you. We want you to know that uh, it doesn't matter that we are virtual. We are as um, accessible as we have ever been and as committed to supporting you. So, so thanks folks. Um, next question. Okay, it looks like we have a QuestBridge student um, wondering, um, well, they received their QuestBridge scholarship and they're wondering, are they still not required to get a work form? That's correct. And so you're not required to have work study if you're in the QuestBridge program. That was something that was offered to you at the time of admission. Um, again, work study is always optional. Um, QuestBridge students, I think, would have the opportunity, if you wanted to find a work-study job, that would be something that we could um, see if we could offer you, but it wouldn't be something that we would have offered in your initial package. It's a, um, a special scholarship in that way. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, moving on here. Uh, next question. Is there a deadline for accepting work-study and also finding the job? There is not. So you can accept your work-study at any point. Um, all the way through the semester. Of course, the later you accept it, uh, the less time you have to work and earn, and the more likely it might be that your peers who are looking for work-study jobs may have taken some of the available jobs that you were, you were hoping to apply for. However, um, if you're working, if, if you're taking a class and you're working with a professor and that professor says, you know, I have a work-study position available um, and you have a work-study offer out there, um, you can go accept that offer at that point and we can start the process whenever you're ready. You do have to accept it uh, before the end of the spring term, before exams, um, clearly because after that, you wouldn't have enough time to work before the semester ends. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. How is financial aid affected if you decide to live off campus rather than off, on, well, it says off campus, but I'm assuming on campus. Sure, sure. Um, and this is one of the biggest questions, of course, as you might imagine, that we are getting right now. I know everyone is trying to decide what makes the most financial sense for me. Should I live on campus? What if I want to live at home? Should I rent somewhere? Um, and so I, I want to address generally how this works. Our goal is that regardless of where you're learning this semester, your level of financial support is consistent. And so the family contribution that you have, we're trying to hold that as consistent as possible, regardless of whether you're renting, you're living on campus, or you're living at home. And so um, 
when you're thinking about what's the best way and best place for me to learn, we want you to have that as top of mind and not necessarily um, will I make or lose money <laughs> depending on my choice uh, because uh, your family contribution is consistent regardless of those choices um, and your aid is adjusted in a way that what you're looking at in terms of overall out-of-pocket expenses is probably going to be similar. Um, if you're in a situation where you may be paying rent somewhere, that's the one factor we can't control. Your financial aid um, in that scenario would be the same as if you were living on campus, if you're gonna be paying rent off campus. What we don't know is your landlord might charge you more than Duke would to live there, or your meal expenses could be more uh, or less. That's a, a variable we can't control, um, and we wouldn't adjust your aid based on what you're actually paying if it costs more than the cost of Duke. And so you would need to uh, be thoughtful in the way that you approached a rent rental situation. Um, but generally speaking, if you're looking at things that are comparable, we want you um, to study where it makes the most sense for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have some more uh, questions coming in off of the chat. Does anyone want to read off the, the next question for me? I think Michael might have frozen. Yeah, so, not a problem. Yeah. Um, the next question is, when will financial aid refunds be issued? Great question. Um, and I actually was just working with the bursar on this information yesterday. Um, and so we are anticipating that financial aid refunds will be available by the first day of classes. Uh, so we're, we, that is always the timeline that we have worked on at Duke. Uh, we're not anticipating a change in that timeline for refunds right now. Um, and so our goal is always actually a little in advance of that. Uh, that might be more challenging this year than what we've seen in the past, um, but currently we're not anticipating a change to that timeline. Okay, uh, good question. The next one is, when will I be able to see my financial aid details on Duke Hub again? Uh, so we're working on them this week. Uh, our goal is to have them completed by the end of the week. So come Monday, the majority of uh, first year students should be able to see those finalized aid awards. Um, it'll make a big, busy few days for us as we make all of these switches to uh, the loans as, as we discussed. And we're also getting updated information from housing as well, because I know um, lots of folks have talked about making different, different arrangements. Um, but we are, are working as diligently as we can. And the goal is to have them by next week for you. Okay. Uh, the next question we have up is, will we be refunded money if I the health insurance? So the, yeah, the question was, will we be re refunded money if we deny the health insurance? Yes, so the charge is placed on your account. They'll charge you for the health insurance. You might see that on there, depending on the timing. When we find out that you don't need the health insurance money anymore, that charge disappears. It goes away. So if you don't need the health insurance, we aren't going to charge you for the health insurance. All right. Uh, next up, is it possible to accept just the work study portion and not the loan? That's a great question. Um, and absolutely. And I'm actually glad you asked because it's something that I want to make sure I highlight. Um, you do not have to take loans or work study. So um, when you have access to your Duke Hub again, which will uh, happen in just a few days, um, you'll have the opportunity and you'll actually see a button on Duke Hub and it will say accept. Uh, we do not accept them automatically for you. We let you take that action. And so you can go in and accept just the work study if that's what you're interested in. You will have to accept it if you want it. Um, and the same is true for the loans. You'll see a button that says any loan we've offered you, you'll have to actually press accept on that and then take the additional steps on the government's website um, saying that you agree to the terms and you go through their counseling to receive the loan funds. One other thing um, that I want to point out just tan as a sort of tangential comment to, to this question is that um, you don't have to accept the amount we've offered. 
So if for some reason you don't want, let's say you've been offered $5,000 and you only want three for the year, $1,500 a semester, you can email us and let us know. The accept button is going to accept the full loan amount. Um, but if you think you need less than that, you would need to contact us to let us know. And so you can email your financial aid counselor with that. Um, when you are in Duke Hub, the name of your financial aid counselor is up in the corner and you can click on that and it will send an email directly to your counselor, um, conveniently located next to your aid award. So um, you, can, you can take that action anytime. Uh, we, and I want you to know that. So I know our offices are virtual. There's not a, a physical location where you can, can come by. Um, but you can always email us. That's the best way to get in touch with us. Um, you'll, you saw uh, on the contact us slide and you see on our website, we do have um, a general phone number. You will have to leave a message at that phone number um, and then we'll call you back uh, is how our phone, our phone service works at this point in time. Um, so an email is often the most efficient way um, to get assistance. Great question. Um, if financial aid increases to cover the health insurance cost, mm -hmm. is it the full amount, 3605, or a partial sum? It's the full amount. And so that is um, one of the things that might differentiate us from some of our peer institutions. Um, in many cases, uh, other institutions don't cover the cost of health insurance, or if they do, they only cover part of it, and then you've got a share in the other. Uh, we think health insurance is important, and so we want to make sure that you are covered and that you can utilize those services. And so if you are on financial aid and the health insurance office tells us that your existing health insurance doesn't work or you aren't covered at all, we'll cover the full cost. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up. Is the Duke list the only place to find work study opportunities? It isn't the only place. There are a couple of sites that contain it. Um, you'll, when you go to the financial aid page on our site, you'll notice that there's also a place called Muser that you can use. Um, and occasionally, as I mentioned as an example earlier, we do know students who um, are taking a class that faculty member or the department that they're in need a work study student and you might be the person that they think is the right person for that particular lab work that particular research opportunity in which case they still have the opportunity to offer you that position through work study and they can work with their payroll office as well so there are a number of ways to find a job thank you for that um next up i will need the health insurance do I have to take action for financial aid to cover it? You do. And if there's, you know, there are a few messages I want you to take away from today. But one of the big ones is you have to take action. Um, if you take no action, you'll receive the charge, but we won't be able to cover it because what we need to know was, um, did you have health insurance before? Uh, there will be students who like our health insurance. They like it better than what they are covered by um, for one reason or another, but we'll only pay for it if you go through this process, because the health insurance office is going to determine whether or not the coverage is adequate um, based on the legal requirements that we have as a university for covering our students. Um, and so if the legal requirements are not met, then we will cover the health insurance for you. If you take no action, we don't know whether or not that was the case for you and you missed the deadline, you may be out of pocket $3,600 that you might not have needed to spend. Thank you for that response, Miranda. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, when do freshmen usually start doing their work study jobs and also about how many hours per week do students usually spend doing their work study job? That's another great question. So um, usually work study jobs coincide with the beginning of the semester. I think this semester could be slightly more unusual than semesters we've seen in the past because now um, some students who are planning to return to campus aren't going to be there um, and that's going to impact uh, in some ways the positions that are available and the ways that campus departments may need to hire. Um, and so we may see a slightly delayed timeline with that as departments themselves are figuring out what work study jobs they need. Um, some jobs will start right away, but you should check Duke List because those jobs may continue to be posted throughout the course of the semester. Um, they may see a need arise in the middle of the semester, and if you haven't found a job yet, you may see new, new postings appear. The other um, portion of the question about how long, uh, how many hours a week you may need to work, 
we usually factor in that a student to earn the $2,200 um, that we list in your financial aid offer, usually that's between eight and 10 hours a week uh, worth of earnings, depending on your rate of pay. Thank you for that response, Moran. Uh, next question, can I do work study if I'm doing remote learning in another country for the fall and when should we start looking for jobs? You are not able to participate in work study if you are out of the country. Um, and so there are a number of rules and, and being in a remote environment has changed for us uh, in a way that we've never had to consider as a residential campus in the past, what we can offer. Uh, and so if you're outside the US, unfortunately work study um, would not be an option for you. Um, however, I think uh, for those who are residing in the country and for those of you who are gonna be on campus, there's never a bad time to start looking for jobs. So um, I would begin checking uh, regularly um, on Duke List and on user to see what's coming, coming up and then continue to check as the semester begins. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, is there a deadline for accepting subsidized loans? The deadline is the end of the spring semester. So we need you to accept that before um, the semester ends, but if you realize that you need the funding and it's October, um, it's not too late to take out a subsidized loan. It could be March and it's not too late um, to take out the loan. So if your financial needs change, those offers are still available to you throughout the academic year, um, but they will be closed to you once the semester ends. The way that federal loans work um, and that financial aid in general works is we're academic year specific. So what you have right now for a financial aid offer and for a loan offer is for this academic year. When this academic year closes, you'll have to apply for financial aid again to receive funding for the next year. We update it based on your tax information every year. Um, and so if you didn't borrow, let's say your $5,000 this year, it doesn't mean that you have now 10 that you saved up and can borrow all next year. Um, it's a fresh $5,000 offer again uh, when we move into the new academic year. So if you think you need the funding, you'll certainly want to take it out before the academic year closes. Thank you for that response. Uh, next question. If you get an outside scholarship to cover your work study, how will that occur? also a really good question and it, and it leads me to, to a couple of points. When you receive an outside scholarship, um, we absolutely can cover the work study with that outside scholarship. And so um, when the funding comes in, uh, let's, say, let's say you received a $5,000 scholarship for the year. We could replace your work study with that and we could also use it to reduce your loan funding. Um, we want to reduce borrowing and indebtedness where we can. So um, that's how we would apply it uh, to your financial aid. That said, um, we're talking about resources, and I realized I missed uh, one piece that might be helpful for you to know uh, when it came to buying a computer. If you have an outside scholarship that is willing to pay for the cost of your computer, if they will put in writing that their scholarship can go towards that cost, we can allow you to use that funding without reducing your loan or work study so that it can help actually pay towards, towards that cost as opposed to reducing your other aid. Excellent tangent. <laughs> uh, next question. Will scholarships you have for this year negatively impact your aid next year? It won't. And so that's really good news. We want to encourage you to get scholarships. Um, we also keep an outside scholarship database that you can look at on our website. Um, and we keep that updated. It's always from people who've specifically reached out to us as Duke saying, hey, could you advertise this to your students? Uh, and so most of the deadlines for this coming academic year have closed since we're right at the start of the semester. Um, but applications for next year will begin opening. And we never want you to think that by receiving a financial aid scholarship from an outside organization that you're going to be penalized in some way in a future year because you received that money. Um, that's there to help with your educational costs and um, we don't we don't have any kind of um, change in your financial aid offer for next year as a result. Thank you, thank you for that response. Uh, next question. If we are on campus this fall but end up off campus in the spring, Will our bills change accordingly and will we not pay for housing spring semester? 
That's right. We, we promise not to bill you for housing you don't use. <laughs> um, <laughs> we we, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we, we can dismiss that, that fear. And, um, and so we're, we're trying to express this to our um, juniors and seniors now because there was a lot of anxiety about, well, what does that mean in terms of our cost? And so when I made the reference earlier that we're really trying to make sure that you're receiving similar levels of support, no matter what's going on uh, with, with COVID and no matter what's going on with housing and social distancing, um, that commitment remains true. So what you're looking at in terms of your family contribution, um, that's going to be the case. And it's not going to matter whether or not uh, we have to do something similar in the spring. We hope we don't. But if we do, um, certainly you would not be charged for, um, for housing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that response. Uh, next question. Should we be at all concerned if our financial aid is not appearing in DUCAB? No, don't panic. Um, we, we have just pulled it offline uh, temporarily because we are making some changes to that aid offer to give you better federal loans. Um, we had offered our own loan first and then the federal government uh, beat us on the interest rate and we want you to have the better one. And so um, those will uh, reappear early next week. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. Do we get any refund for housing if we end up being sent home from campus early this semester? That's a great question. Um, and I think right now, uh, we're not in a position to speculate about what's going to happen in the semester. Our goal is, um, of course, to keep the campus open, uh, regardless of the situation with, with COVID. Um, when the time comes, if the university ends up making a decision about uh, the fact that, that in-residence housing is no longer an option, uh, we'll provide guidance at that time about how that impacts financial aid um, and your cost, and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Um, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. That's what we wish. That's right. Uh, next question. Who should I inform if I will not be on campus this semester? Also a really good question. So um, if you were given a housing assignment, um, you should notify housing that you are not intending to return to campus. And so that would be the first uh, contact that you would, you would just email uh, the housing office and let them know that you didn't plan on living on campus. But for financial aid, we want you to do uh, one more thing. Uh, we're putting together a survey and the survey will go out later this week where we would be asking you to enter your information to say as well what you were planning on doing um, in terms of housing because it means that we need to not just adjust the fact that housing needs to know that you're not coming. We need to make sure that we're getting you the right level of aid, depending on where you're living. Um, and so we're going to want you to complete that survey for us. We'll send that link out. It will go out to all students uh, as soon as it's available. Um, but uh, there'll be two steps, one tell housing, and then you'll have a way to tell us really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. How do I make an appointment with my financial aid counselor? That's a really good question. Um, and being in a virtual world now, uh, you actually have the opportunity to book online. You can do that through our website. So if you go to the Contact Us page, it'll say, would you like to make an, make an appointment with your counselor? Um, you will log in with your Duke Med ID, and then um, you'll choose your counselor from the list. That means you should probably go to Duke Hub first and make sure you know who your counselor is so that you're booking with the right person. That's the person who's been looking at your financial information um, this whole process. And so that's the person that you'll want to talk to. Click on that individual um, and then it'll show you all the available times for them. All of our meetings are over a platform called Microsoft Teams. Um, it books automatically through that platform. They're not through Zoom. Um, and so you'll be given a link at the time you book to download that app so that you can talk with us over Teams. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. uh, quick question. Is additional scholarship aid refunded? Scholarship aid, I think that's an interesting question. I want to make sure that I understand it. Um, and so I think what might be helpful is if I explain how outside scholarships work. Um, and I guess, I guess I'm assuming that we're talking about outside scholarships with this question. Um, but if you receive a scholarship from somewhere else, when we get it, the first thing it will do is reduce the loan. 
and the work study that's in your financial aid offer. And we might reduce work study first and then the loans to make sure your bill is covered since work study is just paid to you as a job. Um, and, and so one of the things that we um, would do is if you're in a situation where the outside scholarship is so large that now the initial loan and work study that you were offered um, has been fully replaced, at that point it actually begins to reduce the Duke scholarship uh, that we would have offered in your financial aid. Outside scholarships don't replace the family contribution. Um, to Ace who asked that question, if, if you have anything specific than that that we need to go into, please feel free to specify. Uh, we'll go into as much detail as necessary. Um, but the next question, if I have received local scholarships, where can I apply these to my financial aid? Great question. So if you go into the Duke Hub app, there's an option to report outside scholarships. I recognize that you might not be able to see that uh, right away because um, we have taken that down, but when we open it back up next week, you can go into Duke Hub, you can click on a link and it'll say report your outside scholarships. That sends an email to us to let us know how much you're expecting so that when the money comes, we can apply it appropriately. And it also means that even before the money is here, um, when you get your bill, if you tell us uh, relatively soon, we may be able to make an adjustment in advance of the bill. Um, we're working as hard as we can to get financial aid offers out. And so some of these adjustments might not happen until after the billing date. Um, but we'll do as, as many as we can uh, initially. But the most important thing is just to let us know that it's coming. Um, if you want to be proactive and you don't want to wait for that link in Duke Hub to come and report your scholarship, you can just send an email to our main email address, which is finaid at duke.edu. Um, and it's available on our website as well. So if you click the link um, for, to FinAid, it can send us an email. Just tell us the name of the scholarship tell us the amount of the scholarship, obviously, um, and tell us a little bit about how it's going to be applied. Some scholarships are intended all for fall uh, and some are for the year. So when you report it, let us know, are you reporting the fall amount or the amount for the year? That way we know um, how to account for it within your financial aid. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, next question, if I am remote in the fall, would it be possible to have a position at a research lab in a local institution be considered as work study? That's a good question. I think it might depend on where you are remote from. We mentioned students outside the US, unfortunately, um, don't have those opportunities. And there are some students in certain states that may also not have those opportunities. Um, there, are, there are quite a few regulations around work study. And so if that's your situation and you're looking for a particular job, uh, that would be something that um, I, I know we're in a general chat. We may have to talk to with uh, on a more individual basis about what your opportunities might be. Thank you. Um, can you go over Flex again? Sure. So, um, so most most of you will probably be using it on your phone. I know I don't use plastic cards anymore, um, and so. It's, it's something that you can use and it automatically, it uses your Duke ID that you can make purchases on campus and it will charge it to your Duke bill unless you actually preload it with money. So you can go into the app and you can say, I want to put $100 to spend on my flex, like a prepaid debit card. And so that way, when you go down to Duke store and you wanna buy a book, um, you've already put the money on there. You just hold up your phone and you can, you can purchase the book right from Duke stores. Um, if you didn't put the money on there ahead of time, you can purchase the book from, from Duke stores. But at that point, um, it's actually gonna go on your bill. And the one just concern with using Flex in that way is that if you're not paying attention to how much you're using that card, um, you can ask any of the counselors on the call uh, here. Um, we spend a lot of time talking with students who have balances who can't register because they've used that and didn't realize how much they had charged. And then they're not sure how to pay for that bill at the end of the term. It's really convenient, um, but it can get away from you pretty quickly. And so that's why we're recommending, you can open the app, load it with money from your bank account ahead of time. You can tie it to a debit card or something like that. And then at that point, um, you're never gonna spend more than what you've already loaded. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Uh, next question, is there a reason to do work study instead of getting a job separate from Duke? 
that's also a good question. And um, some of the advantages of work study would be if there is a job on campus that is something that you're interested in with a perhaps a faculty member that you really want to work with. Um, there, there are positions that might be related to an area of interest of study, or it could be a convenience factor because it's close to where you live, whereas um, some, some of the off-campus jo jobs may not be. But in the virtual area, um, in the virtual era, that might not be as big a factor um, as what we would have seen in the past. And so certainly, if there are jobs outside of Duke and those better suit your needs or have a higher rate of pay, there's no, no reason that you would want to turn that down to take a Duke work study job. Um, you take the job that is most advantageous for you if you're able to, to secure one. Thank you for that response. Uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, when will we find out about next year's financial aid if we wanna use that information to determine if we'll accept this year's loan? So I'm, I want to make sure I'm interpreting the question correctly. Um, and I think that might be related to my comment that you have all the way through the spring semester to accept your loan. Um, and so financial aid is always issued in the summer, but usually we're doing it um, before the bills that go out in July. Uh, bills usually go out July, around July 1st. Um, usually students are able to see their financial aid the end of May, early June, after the end of the spring semester. Um, and so loans are designed not to cover future costs. They're designed to cover the costs for your academic expenses right now. That's why the federal government issues them. So you're not going to have an opportunity to say, I might need this loan later. I should borrow it now based on what I'm seeing for next year, because it's not designed to be for next year's costs. Um, you analyze it each year based on the cost for that academic year to determine whether or not you need it. Um, that being said, um, one thing that I think is important to mention, there's often a lot of anxiety about the fact that we review financial aid every year. If your income and resources are consistent from year to year uh, and your household looks the same, same number of people in the household, same number of people attending college, and that's, that's a big question. So if you have a sibling that's either entering college or graduating, your financial aid can change. Um, but if ever, all the factors are consistent, your aid remains pretty consistent from year to year. There might be small adjustments um, as tuition changes. And usually that's because we know if tuition increases, you might need an increase in aid as well. Um, but generally speaking, aid is, is pretty consistent. And so um, what you're receiving this year is probably a pretty good gauge of what you might receive next year if your circumstances remain similar. Thank you for that response. Um, next question is, if we defer, and I assume housing is what's in question here, do we get a housing refund? Um, I think that I want to make sure that I also understand that question. And I, and I think you might be referring to deferring admissions. Um, if that's the case, if you're deferring your admission and you want to work on not attending at all this semester, uh, you would need to notify us of that. And we haven't issued any bills or any charges at this point. And so um, there wouldn't be any refund to, to issue if you let us know that that's what, that's what you want to do. Um, and you certainly wouldn't be charged if, if you do not attend and you let us know that in advance. Thank you. Um, next, how do we keep track of our payments through work study? It goes directly to your bank account. So you would see how much you're paid and it's paid every two weeks. Um, and so you'll, you'll see that coming into your bank account. It's not automatically credited against tuition. Um, it goes straight to your, to your bank. Um, and then uh, your supervisor would be able to tell you how much you'd earned over the course of the semester. So if you're concerned of, am I going to run out? Have I already earned my $2,200? Um, your supervisor can give you that information to tell you how close you might be to that allocation. Thank you. Uh, down to, I think, our last five or six. Uh, where can recordings of these sessions be found? Um, so we will be posting these later this week. Um, the recording from yesterday has been sent to the new student programs office, the same place that you're finding information about these orientation sessions, uh, and they will be posted there. They'll be sending links uh, to these once they are available. Um, and then uh, we'll also send them information from the PowerPoints as well. Uh, I wanted to put a plug in regarding the videos 
Uh, we have videos that talk about work study. We have videos that talk about how to buy a computer. Uh, when you receive the invitation from us for these sessions, um, there were links to those, uh, and those are available on our YouTube channel, and you're welcome to access those at any time as well. Okay, thank you, Miranda. Uh, next question, can you work extra work study hours beyond your allotment? If you do earn your full $2,200, that would be between you and your supervisor. If they have um, the budget to be able to keep you on without using financial aid to help pay your wage, um, then you would just let them know that you wanted to stay and they would let you know whether or not they were able to, to keep you on working in that job past your work study allotment. Okay, thank you. Uh, down to the last four or five here, a couple of coming late. Um, I have to report all scholarships I have received, even if the money goes directly to me. Also, if I do not want the scholarships to apply to the work study, is that possible? Great question. Um, you are required legally to report scholarships. Um, the organizations funding the scholarships, um, when they do that, generally um, are able to take uh, an exemption on a tax return because they're an organization providing educational funding. Um, and so uh, there's a paperwork trail for that. And so um, the university does need to know that you received it and where they mail the payment um, doesn't determine whether or not you would need to let us know. We, we need to know of any um, scholarships that a student is receiving in order to be supported um, for those purposes. And um, it does impact your financial aid. So it doesn't have to go to work study first. If you prefer we apply it to a student loan, we can. Um, but it will go to those two areas. And then after that, it is applied against your Duke scholarship. Oh, I think you're muted, Jamal. Pardon, trying to rush. No problem. Uh, time constraints. Um, I, if we have received a check for an outside scholarship, would it be fine to deliver the check when we arrive on campus? Um, you won't have the opportunity um, to just walk up and, and deliver the check. We'd actually ask that you mail it. Um, and so there is a mailing address posted on our website that will tell you exactly where to send the payment um, because there, there is not a, a an office and uh, that is open where you'd be able to hand the check in at this time. So be sure that uh, be sure that you get that in the mail sooner rather than later. We'll begin applying them them shortly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can we set up payments for our bill? How and when should we do so? So there is um, a monthly payment plan. Uh, for bills. However, because the semester um, we're still waiting on a billing timeline, uh, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of it in the same ways as we have in the past because usually the first payment was due in July. If you were to sign up now, um, you'd have to pay the first couple of months up front and then the payments would be spaced out for the rest of the year. Um, I believe you can still sign up for that, uh, but just so you know, those first payments would be heavier than the subsequent ones. Um, what we would encourage you to do is uh, we are expecting that bills will come out in the middle of August. And then at that point, uh, you would have uh, usually a month turnaround time before uh, any payments were due on the bill. Okay. Uh, similarly related, thank you for that response. Mm -hmm. uh, when is the family contribution payment due? Sure. So it's after the first bill. Uh, and so we're expecting that the, that first bill uh, where there would be a due date expected would be in September, you should, somewhere around the middle of September. Okay, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I access yesterday's Zoom meeting? Uh, it will be available as soon as New Student Programs is able to put it on their website. I know that they were working on those from yesterday. I, I corresponded with them this morning. And so um, as soon as they are available, you should see them posted on the site. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what is the FlexCard app called? So it should be for your Duke card and it's within the Duke Hub app. Um, if you go to duke.edu and you just type in Duke card, you'll get information about all the ways that you can use your Duke card and you can get information about how to use Flex, how to access it uh, with information there. Okay. Well, I think at this point, um, we have taken our time, and I'm happy to see that we got through the questions, um, but we know that you probably have more. Uh, we're holding another session tomorrow, an important one, about what to do if your family is um, needing to report special circumstances or your income might have changed due to COVID-19. 
And um, we'll certainly do a, a Q&A during that time as well with an opportunity to ask more live questions. We're also holding op open office hours on Thursday and Friday, and it is fully Q&A for the hour. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to interact with us this week uh, and get your questions answered. And I want to th thank you for your time today. Everybody have a great afternoon.